So today we're going to be talking about abstract art. Abstract art is expressing your feelings or emotions with color, shapes, and lines. So it doesn't look like the things you see in real life. Here is an example of an abstract tree versus a realistic tree. They're both paintings, but they're painted in different styles. The first one is called abstract. If you look closely, you can see the trunk of the tree and the shape of the tree, but you can't go outside and see a tree that looks like this. The second picture is painted realistically. So realistic painting is painting exactly what you see. Today, we're gonna focus more on abstraction and an artist named Vasily Kandinsky. Here are two of his paintings and just take a minute and look at these paintings and try to guess what he was thinking of. Pause the video and see how many things you can see in these two paintings. We're also going to be learning about geometric shapes and organic shapes and using these in our drawings today. So geometric shapes are shapes that you know they have names like a circle, a triangle, a square. Most of them have angles and sides to them and they're used in math. Organic shapes are shapes that you make up or they're found in nature. They're more irregular in appearance and they're not symmetrical. So shapes like leaves or cacti, cacti are examples of organic shapes. They're swirly, they're wavy, they have curves to them. So we're going to be making up organic shapes and drawing geometric shapes in our drawings. Here is our artist Vasily Kandinsky and here are some of his paintings that he did. You can see all the lines and the shapes and the overlapping um, lines and shapes and colors in his drawings. Today we're going to be doing an abstract artwork based on artist Vasily Kandinsky. So first we're going to draw circles, lines, and shapes, and then we will add color to it. So in school, students, your teacher has a circle paper for you to um, to start on just because there you don't have a lot of circles to trace in school. But at home, students can just grab a piece of paper and a pencil and I'll tell you to um, go grab some things to start tracing. Right now, get out a paper and a pencil and you're gonna look for something circle to trace with. Some examples are some coins, a lid, something easy, like if you're in school, just grab your water bottle and trace the bottom of it. You can also take the cap off of your water bottle and trace a smaller circle there. So you're just making a bunch of circles that are overlapping inside of each other. And then we will get out our ruler or your blue folder to trace some lines. So you can trace lines, move your ruler. Remember to hold down your ruler while you trace the lines. You can make lines crossing each other like a tic-tac-toe board. But make sure you put a lot of different lines. Then you can add some more shapes like triangles and squares. You can go over all of your lines with Sharpie and then add some organic shapes, which are shapes that you make up. So they're wiggly, they're wavy, and they don't have names. After you're done your drawing, make sure you go over all of your lines with Sharpie, and then you can start using the Sharpie to fill in some shapes and make some lines thicker to give it more of a var variation. It looks nice when you have some circles that are thicker lines and some that are thin. You can also add designs to your shapes just to make it a little bit more detailed. Next we're ready to color. So it's good to have a variation of different um, things to color with. So I'm gonna grab markers, whatever you have at home, the more you have, the better. So I'm grabbing markers, crayons, you can have colored pencils and even paint, but if you're using watercolor paint, hold off on that until the very end. I want you to use different materials first. So um, with abstract art, you're kind of just doing whatever you feel like it. There's no rules, there's no wrong answers. If you want, you can listen to music while you're coloring because music has a really great influence 
and some people associate colors with different things that they hear or different feelings. Like some people think of red and they think of angry and um, really loud music, but other people might associate red with a red balloon or the beach and being happy. So everyone's feelings are different. Blue might remind you of the beach and the ocean or blue skies, or it might make you sad. So you color how you're feeling and color different shapes and use a variety of different art materials. You also don't have to stay in the line. So if you want to color like yellow over top of multiple shapes, you can totally do that too. It's not scribbling as much as putting patches of color in different spots of your drawing. And here I'm just coloring in some more of the checkerboard with my colored pencil. Add as much color as you want on your paper. You can leave a lot white too, like Kandinsky did. If you're at home and you wanna use watercolor, just make sure you color in a lot with markers, crayons, or colored pencils because I don't want you just going over everything with watercolor. You want to make the details, some of the details with the markers, crayons, and colored pencils. If you are at home and you want to use watercolors at the very end, grab your water, watercolors, water, a paintbrush, and a paper towel. And also the students at school, like if you just want to do all your details with your, whatever you're coloring with, in school and then when you get home you can add some color with your paint you can do that too but here um with the watercolor i'm just gonna paint over some of the white spots you can leave a lot of white like Kandinsky left a lot of white in his paintings but i'm just going to dip my paintbrush in water i'm gonna use some yellow first so put your brush in the yellow and then since I used Sharpie, this isn't going to like bleed all over the paper. So I can just go over some parts. So you can go over crayon because crayon resists paint. And another cool thing is I colored part of this blue. And if you go over top of a blue with a magenta, it'll turn the blue a purple color. So you can experiment with overlapping paint with markers as well and then when you're finished just put this on seesaw and you're completed the abstract project